Can you change the past? In a way, yes, in the way that you are kind of changing your memories. We have the idea of optogenetics, which is something that um, scientists can do right now, in which they would l use light to light up different parts of a rat's brain that would be able to remove the fear associated with bad memories for certain events. Um, however, that cannot be done without drilling a hole into the rat's skull, so we have not tried that on humans just yet. Uh, scientist Julie Shaw, who is a uh, criminal psychologist who specializes in the science of memory, claims that she is a memory hacker and she can use the science of memory to make you think you did things that never happened. For instance, um, she says that she has been, been able to make people believe that they committed crimes that they in no way committed um, using specific details of how the brain works and um, coaxing them in her own way. So the brain is a very interesting thing. It's a it's a network, it's a network of uh, different cells and it would stretch different regions of the brain and you would be able to maybe trip certain parts of it by doing and saying certain things. Um, the brain is amazing because it is able to adapt all the time to different environments, situations. I mean, at work when you learn, you know, hey, the way you did it was fine except skip this one part, you will remember that and adapt to your ability to cope with that, and that's a great thing. It makes you viable as a person and um, smart and helps you learn. However, that is also highly manipulative or manipulable. Every time you tell a story according to Shaw, you are telling it a little bit different. Maybe you're adding a little information that you forgot before. Maybe you're adding something that you didn't actually remember not something that actually happened to you, but a detail someone else added. Maybe you're imagining things. Every time you tell a story, you are changing it a little bit. And for her um, and her system, to implant a false memory, she says, you try to get someone to confuse their imagination with their memory, and that's it. So you get them to repeatedly imagine the false thing happening, and you start off by telling uh, according to her, the person that they did do a thing. Let's say they committed a crime and that they have some kind of authoritative evidence to say so. Her example is you would, um, you say you committed a crime when you were a kid and I called your parents and they corroborated it. So you're gonna trust your parents as this authority figure source and that gives her some credibility. Then she'll add some details that are true like where you're from, what your friend's name is, what street do you live on, what is, what does it look like around the area where this did not happen but she says it happened. You are creating um, a situation where someone would be easily able to imagine this happening with you know, some things that are based in reality. The best lies are based in reality, aren't they? And then you would build this narrative in your head and it is possible that she is able to convince people that they've done things they've never done and therefore it does shine a light a little bit on the criminal justice system, on the interrogation system. And this seems like very likely something that an interrogator could employ in order to get some sort of confession out of people. And it's a little worrying how easy it is to manipulate memories according to her. And she does have a lot of experience in the field. Um, it kind of shines a light on whether or not we should be trusting this this kind of evidence as uh, the most strong evidence in criminal cases, for one. She has a new book out called The Memory Illusion in which you can read more about this and potentially incept your friends. Do you have any false memories that you're aware of or you had in the past rather? Let us know below and please like and subscribe for more.